Jeff, Anthem is almost out. Anthem is almost out, Brad. The next game from the makers of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Okay. Perhaps you've heard of them. I have, yeah. Uh, uh, they've... Those games were good. Those are good games. <laughs> they are good games. At a point. I could agree with that. The trajectory. Sure. Maybe there a little bit. With yeah. Some of that stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, now they're trying something new. Yeah. Uh, it's Anthem. It's a loot shooter. Yeah. Uh, pretty different. Do you like Destiny and or Warframe and or Borderlands? Quite a bit. Uh, there's probably some more. Diablo. Okay, yeah. Not, not exactly. Not, not much of a shooter. Not exactly a shooter, sure. but uh, but definitely. Hellgate Luger. London. Okay, yes. There you go. You know, yes, the, yes, the luminaries the of the genre. Titans of the genre. Yes, yeah. obviously. Uh, I brought a bunch of footage back. I went to EA and played a bunch of Anthem the other day. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to jump right in here. Put on and, and look at this stuff. Uh, so just might. in time to see <laughs> fly right into a layup post. Yeah. <sighs> um, it's a group shooter. It's up to four players. It's kind of open world. Uh-huh. Uh, well, it is open world, but the way the mission structure works kind of has you loading into the world to do a mission and then right back out. Okay. To kind of summarize your mission and equip new gear. And is like, is it, as that summary kind of like a cutscene? Yeah, where you'll, you'll, you'll see stuff. Yeah, or? you'll 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 see some of that at the end of this mission. Um, basically, like it, it is an open world. There is sort of a free roam mode that you can get into, but. Uh, it's not like you're going to pick up a bunch of quests and then just go out and hang out in the world as long as you want and do all those quests. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more regimented than that. It's a lot more like you are doing a specific single mission and then heading like, back to do your loot business and then going out and doing another mission. Uh, I do like loot business. Uh, well, you're in luck because dudes like this drop a lot of loot. Okay. Uh, I'm playing... Uh, so the, it's, it's about mech suits. They're called javelins. Yeah. Uh, there's four of them. I am playing the Storm Javelin right now, which is kind of like a spellcaster sort of class. Okay. Um, there's a, so I've got like this ice blast that freezes guys and then you can shatter them. Uh, my buddy over there is the Interceptor, which is kind of like the stealth slash melee class. Okay. Um, I messed around with the Ranger a little bit, which is just your, your really stock standard, like, like gun dude. Shooty, shooty guy. Uh, like the Ranger might as well be the soldier class from Mass Effect. It's got the same, um, it's got the same homing missile, the same grenade type oh, okay. thing. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of I, I picked the spellcaster because it was something I wouldn't normally pick. I was like, I should do something different for this footage, uh, and kind of ended up liking it quite a bit. Okay. It's got a lot of AOE, a lot of different elemental type damages. That uh, yeah, the ice thing sounds interesting. Yeah, that that's... you can combo together. This is a uh, that's kind of my AOE lightning that you've seen me use a couple times. Mm -hmm. Uh, the combat's pretty nimble. Uh, I didn't play the Colossus, which is the big bruiser, kind of incredible Hulk-looking class. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so I don't know how slow and clunky that one is, but uh, all the others I used. I mean, you've got you've got your jump, your double jump, like your kind of air dash. Uh, Did mobility seem like a, a key part of yeah. like, just moment to moment? I think or, so. Yeah, because I, I know you know you can obviously like just fly at any time. Yeah. Um, but did, did you find yourself using that in the middle of combat, or is it really just about your kind of double jumps and... The, and it, I, I'd say it's more about jumping and dodging. I mean, the flight... Maybe this was me being a little overly concerned with how limited it is, but but the, the flight is governed by an overheat mechanic. Right. And you overheat fast enough that I was always afraid of relying on it in combat, because I didn't want to just like fall out of the sky at the wrong time. Yeah. So I found myself not using it maybe as much as I should have. Um, Especially watching some other people play this class, uh, so so you, you can also hover in midair. You can like, I'll, I'll fly here probably in a second, and you'll kind of see what I mean. But you go from your like Iron Man flying around mode to like if you pull the left trigger to aim, you just go to sort of a hover mm -hmm. shooting mode. Bye. Uh, yeah. So like this is the flight. Yeah. Uh, I like I said I didn't do a lot of it, but if you were to just pull the left trigger at any time, you just become stationary in midair. Uh, and then, like, for this class, you've got that big AOE lightning thing that you can aim. Uh, and obviously, it's going to be a lot easier to hit groups of enemies from, from mm -hmm. hovering overhead. And so. this was a cut in the footage. You yeah. Didn't, so, okay. Just so, want to make sure. So, I played a lot of missions in this game. Yeah? And they all, let's say, were seemed to be variations on a theme. Uh, which was fly to a place, like, activate a thing, 
fight off the waves of enemies that show up. Interact with a thing, your yeah. ghost pops out, says, we need to hold get, down this area, yeah. Spartan, or Spartan, whatever get, you are. Get a radio transmission telling you where to go next, go there, do the same stuff again. Okay, so, I, I mean, I have liked games that have had oh, sure. that structure. That's but, pretty standard, but repeatable first person shooter mission objective stuff. Kind of, maybe want a little more. Yeah, this is this is my ultimate ability for this class, which is just, <laughs> just kind of an okay. orgy of elemental damage, which I'm kind of into. Uh, this is the PC version? Uh, yes, this okay. is yeah, this PC version. Um, but yes, like this, I, we basically cut out from that last battle to here about 10 minutes of the exact same thing. Okay. Of flying to a place, killing a bunch of enemies, and then flying to the next place and killing yeah. those enemies. Um, and this is kind of like the big climactic fight uh, where like heavies start showing up and, and stuff like that. Um, did, it, did you feel like you needed to coordinate with other players very much? Uh, I wasn't using Mike at all, so we didn't do that. Yeah. But I guess I could see how you would. I mean... I guess like uh, my question is, like, did, did you feel like you ever maybe needed no, to? No, I would not say it was okay. required. Like, even with these heavies here, like you see this right. guy I'm I mean, fighting... You're, you're just shooting kinda, stuff. It's not... Yeah, like even with these guys that have shields and... You know, maybe you get into some elemental resists at certain points where you need to coordinate who's using what types of damage or right. something like that, but I didn't really see much of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, like even with these big shield guys, we were just kind of kiting around and getting behind them, and, and yeah. it, it worked out. Right. Um, I know that uh, it's got kind of the same way Destiny, well, Diablo, I guess most loot games do this, how they all have sort of variable difficulty levels for each activity type. Yeah. Uh, it's got a lot of that stuff where you can set you know, go from normal to hard, and I think there might be a legendary, and then I think it even gets up into like Grandmaster okay. at the end game, and you know, you're getting better loot when you right. set it higher right, right, and stuff right. like that. So you can make the game harder, and then you probably would need to coordinate a little bit more. Okay. Um, but I, generally the combat is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, maybe it's just, you know, me not always really liking single shot rifles in games like this, but this shooting doesn't seem Great. Well, that just game. happens to be the, gun the weapon that you I have, have right now. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's that's yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. Is yeah, I've got some footage of sort of the character sheet, like character or the loot equip interface right. stuff, so okay. you can see a lot more of the weapons. Cool. But I mean, there there's a pretty good spread of weapons. I mean, it's full on assault uh, assault rifles and machine guns, shotguns, auto pistols, okay, sniper rifles, like pretty much everything you would expect. Yeah, uh, I just happen to have this this kind of single trigger pull rifle at the moment. Okay. Um. I know, like playing stuff like Destiny, I'm using a wide variety of weapons, but I don't know. Yeah, something about the something about the way this shoots right here. Yeah, I will say, I mean, a little underwhelming. It plays like I, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but it plays a lot like Mass Effect Andromeda, which is actually not the worst thing because the combat was probably the best or the most like successful the, the thing in that one game. Thing they kind of got. Yeah, like yeah. they were getting somewhere with their combat design, so it feels a lot like that, but. Uh, I will say it does not feel precise like Destiny's combat at all. Okay. It's a lot more spammy. It's a lot more just kind of spray your machine gun in a general direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, not so much going for headshots and, and that kind of thing. I must tell Tassin. Please. I need to return to Fort Tarsus. Uh, how much control do you have over your your character in terms of just like what you're making and... You mean in terms of... Character creation. Crafting. That sort of stuff. You've got your four suits, but, you know, are you... Um... Are you making a lot of choices as to like, hey, what type of character, is it, uh, you know, voices, faces? Oh, yeah. Like, um, do you ever see a character face? You do. Let's see what we see here, just to see what kind of gear we're dealing with first. So you get rated on your performance. You get mm -hmm. like XP buffs based on like if you're part of an alliance and stuff like that. Is that is like, like a clan? I think that's or? like a guild or a clan. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's no character creator in this game. You pick a human face, like you just, I, I think there were just like 20-ish preset faces to pick from mm -hmm. for male and female. Um, well, I mean, you're, you're making a character, but it sounds like the, the options are maybe limited. Yes, because yeah. you barely ever see the character. Like, there's a little animation when you load out of the town and into the world where you see your character kind of suiting up, and that's mm -hmm. the one and only place that I ever encountered the face that I picked. So, like, if you're expecting kind of your full-on Mass Effect-style character creator, that's not here. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, you get stuff at the end of a mission. Mm -hmm. And eventually we will equip it. Yeah, so here's all the stuff I picked up. Loot drops just like like a, a Destiny where you see a little a little colored gem fall out of an enemy. Oh, interesting. Uh, and you pick it up. Yeah. So, I mean, I got a ton of stuff out of that one mission. Um, it looks like uh, abilities drop as gear just like weapons do. Like, that's what those white icons are. Like, that's a... 
that is a better version of that lightning AOE thing that I had. Oh. That I can equip into that slot. Weird. So yeah, like stuff like magic abilities you would have thought would be more like something you would upgrade through some kind of like crafting or maybe some kind of skill tree, but it seems like they drop as items just like everything else. Um, Right. Got some footage of flying here. So, like, that's my overheat mechanic there, and you yeah. can dive to cool off if you see. Oh, right, okay. So if you if you di dive really sharply downward, it cools you off. Uh, and then I'm about to overheat, I'm about to overheat, and then I ran into the wall trying to hit that Yeah, but there was waterfall. water, so... Yeah, so you see I've got a buff over there that says cooled on the right. left. Yeah. Um, so that lets you fly for longer, basically because I went through water, I was cooled briefly. Yeah. I like the flight. It's fun. It seems it like feels good. Yeah, it, it it seems like you just can't do very yes, much of it yes, unless you're like, what, like maybe working this dive yes. or I mean honestly like I feel like a lot of the footage we've seen of the game it's been a lot of water around. Yeah, which makes me think that like that like that they're maybe working that as like a skill thing of like oh you can fly way longer as long as you make sure you hit these waterfalls. Yeah, it seems like if you if you're conscious of that stuff you can keep it going for a while. Did you get the impression that there was anything with regards to hey make me fly longer um, uh, like a jump jet upgrade or some kind of thing like that? Yeah, when or, we go through the full character kind of gear equip interface there yeah. there is a slot for uh, passive abilities but I didn't see anything that pertained to flight. Uh, okay. Everything I saw was about like. You know, armor buffs, like... 2% better at yeah, this. Yeah, specific damage yeah. buffs, uh, some some other combat-related stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd, I, It would really be nice to see some kind of flight extension gear in there. Uh, it's like the flight is probably the most unique thing this game has going on. Like, it, it feels good. It's fun to fly around. You're very maneuverable. Right. Um, they have you flying in, like, caves and really constrained spaces quite a bit. So I feel like it's to their credit that you actually can turn on a dime enough to navigate even those spaces. Uh, and, 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 you know, is there any kind of in-flight combat, or is that really when you pull that left trigger to yeah, hover that, at that point, fight? Yeah, at that point you're just stationary in the okay. air, you're not really yeah. flying and shooting at the same time. Okay. Uh, there is some kind of, like, what I would almost liken to, like, flight platforming. I mean, there are no platforms, but it's more like traversal challenge type stuff. Like, okay. there was, uh, I didn't get any footage of it, but there was a mission where I was flying through an old kind of underground ruin with, like, Columns of energy coming at me in patterns, oh. and you're having to so you can you can do kind of a, a lateral roll back and forth while you're flying. Uh, okay. So you're kind of having to dodge obstacles in midair. So there is some sort of skill involved in the flight here and there. Um, but it's it's a lot of fly here yeah. to activate that thing. Right. Here's mm -hmm. some dialogue. Fly to the next place. And what do you again. think of would, uh, you know so. What you think of the dialogue and the story and the setting and stuff like that? Because that's yeah, I've got seems some. Like if that if that stuff is engaging and can pull you through it, I then... let's say the jury's out on the world they have built and what's going on here. Okay, uh, we're doing ancient aliens again. Finally, um, we'll get that guy with the hair. Yeah, you're, you're basically yeah. Uh, you're basically living in a world where the gods existed here at one point and are no longer here. Uh -huh. And left a bunch of ancient technology behind that nobody understands. And then, like one of those is like the anthem itself, yes, right? Yes, the anthem yeah. of creation, which I guess everybody's trying to figure out slash take control of. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it seemed like an okay, if extremely trite, video gamey kind of premise. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into some uh, some of the how the story is told here in a few minutes. Um, not a lot of it really grabbed me right off the bat. Yeah. Obviously, I was, you know, jumping around. They had us jumping between different save files. and Oh, right, right. So, you know, not your character necessarily. Yeah, hard, not, not starting at the start of the story. Yeah, yeah. well, we hard. actually did start oh, at the okay. beginning All of the story, right. but, you know, we didn't stick with that for yeah. the whole day. Um, so I can't say how it develops over time if you were to really just stick with it start to finish. But uh, it did not seem to have the breadth and depth of, let's say, a Mass Effect. Sure, yeah. You know, there are characters to talk to, you make some very minor dialogue choices. And there's some kind of codex. like Yes, there's thing, absolutely right? a codex, which weirdly yeah. was one of the few things they told us not to capture. <laughs> uh, All right. Hell yeah. So yeah, Resource nodes. totally harvesting minerals and herbs. Fucking A, man. All day long. I'm in. Getting rare crafting materials out yeah. of them. So that's one of the things you can do if you go into free roam. Like, there's a lot of that stuff around the world if you oh, just okay. kind of want to explore. Right. Um, 
this was this was just another random side mission that I just threw in some uh, some more footage of. But mm -hmm. uh, all right, so here's the character interface. You start out, you have to pick one of the four javelins, and you're stuck with that for the first few character levels. Um, so the storm, this is like I said, the spellcaster guy. Uh, you've got basically two spell slots. So I've got uh, I think ice shards is the one I've been using, mm -hmm. or frost shards with the the, the just kind of the straight freezing beam. Right. Um, got your two weapon slots. Uh, seems super straightforward. Everything's just got a power number on it. Uh huh. You know, <laughs> you just. All right. Oh, and I see it's, it's like your power number over there that went from 23 to 24. Is that kind of a... I guess that, yeah, I guess that's overall sort of your character, average, that's, that's your, gear score. That's your light level, I suppose. Sure. Um, and then it seems like, you know, like you see some green versions of these things and they'll have, uh, like that one's got plus 5% shotgun damage on okay. it, even yeah. though it is a flame spell. What? Oh. So, uh, and those seem to be ran uh, randomly generated. I, I crafted more than one of the same gun and they came out with different uh, random traits on them oh, like that. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, Twenty percent speed. Uh, so that yeah, this is a uh, the support seal seems to be sort of a support ability. Like you can create different kinds of shields or like damage buff zones and stuff like that. Oh, so that's like an active ability when you yes. slap it on. Yes, there. that okay. is an active ability. And Got then it. this component uh, thing, uh, these are all passive. So like I've got one that gives me a bunch of extra armor. Uh, that one gives me more marksman rifle ammunition. Looks mm -hmm. like you unlock a bunch more slots for those as, okay. you, as you level up. Yeah. So like if there were flight enhancing abilities, they would probably go in one of these slots, but I didn't see anything like that. Okay. Uh, but I do hope there is something along those lines. But yeah, yeah this stuff is very straightforward. Yeah, totally. Like this, like, yep. I didn't even need a tutorial for this, you know, like it's... It's, it's, it's color-coded loot, very slots, you know, yeah, it's all pretty, yeah. yeah. Uh, they seem to be making a big push on cosmetics, but they wouldn't let us look at the store because all the commerce stuff is in flux, they said right now. I bet. Yeah. Um, even with the game coming out pretty soon. But it seems like, uh, it seems like color uh, coordination, color uh, customization is a pretty big deal. You've got a whole bunch of different slots for kind of hardened and softened uh, materials, like rubber and leather and all this stuff oh, huh. uh, that lets you... Uh, customized pretty thoroughly. I didn't dig in enough to see where you change the actual colors. I don't know how I missed that, uh, even though I was looking at paint. Yeah. But I saw just at the event people were doing some really serious customization of like, you know, I saw somebody that looked just like Iron Man. You know, it looks like you can go pretty hard. But like you're going pretty hard on a set model. Yes. And color, doing yeah. color schemes, right? It didn't, I, it didn't seem like you, like you you didn't find like, hey, here's another helmet. No, uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, there are slots for armor. Okay. But I never got any that I saw. Oh, all right. So I'm not actually sure how that stuff works. Okay, so maybe that'll be a cosmetic change as well. Yeah, I mean, a... they are, I mean, you saw there are two types of currency in there. Yep. So, and they are selling stuff. Yep. I don't know what exactly, but I would imagine all of the more outlandish cosmetic stuff is going to be for pay. Or at least for grinding currency. Hmm. See progress. You do have... Look like your favorite EA character. Mm-hmm. HK-47. Yep. That's the one. Relics are dangerous. Uh, so yeah, there's good guys and bad guys, and they all want the old technology. <laughs> or or they want to keep the other guys from getting it because they think it's dangerous. Of course. It, yeah, know. everyone has their own reasons for needing to control the the god tech. Yeah, I get you. Totally. That seems to be the core of the game. Um, Uh, there is some interesting character stuff here and there. Some of the, a few of the characters they introduce in between missions seem like they might be entertaining to hang out with a little bit, but, uh, this, this, this A plot stuff of like, here are the evil bad empire guys yeah. going after the tech and you also kind of want the tech, but you also are afraid of it. But also you're a freelancer. Yes. Uh. Freelancers at the start of this game, uh, no, no benefits. Uh, no, definitely yeah, not. No. Not a lot of work to go around either. They are kind of on the outs with overall human society. Like they've kind of blown it in a few ways. So people are not real big on the freelancer life or hmm. uh, find them very reliable at the moment. So you're kind of trying to like do a bunch of work to rebuild uh, trust in the community. Um, so this is the so, not, it's not so, I started to say a social space. It's not really a social space because you don't see other characters. But it's the opposite of a social space. It's the like your, story, your story space. space. There is there is a hangar bay you can load into from here that is a, an explicit social space uh, where you can kind of see other characters and stuff. But 
Uh, but this is Fort Tarsus. You basically just kind of come back here between missions. What is with this empty ass amusement park looking spot where everyone is just standing there alone I waiting for you to talk to them? They're video game characters. What? The, like, they hang out. They got stuff to say if you want to engage them. Have you? I don't know. Did you ever play, um, oh, what's it called? Mass Effect. Uh-huh. I did. Quite a bit. Uh, that was a game that when you got to uh, the space station, when you got to the Citadel, uh-huh. it felt alive. Yeah. As opposed to this guy is waiting for you to walk up so he can say his one line of dialogue. Yeah. Dragon Warrior 2 style. Yeah. Or a giant Ursix. Wow. Yeah, most, wow. Of, most of the characters that have dialogue do seem to just sort of stand. There are, there are plenty of characters wandering around in this area, but they don't seem to be ones that you can interact with. Right, yeah. What does that mean? It means this is the time to show what you're made of. So you get, you get very limited dialogue choices, but no, you know, there's no dialogue wheel. I don't think you're going to be having a lot of very deep, uh, variable conversations with people. Right. Like you might have in, say, a Mass Effect. Certain rewards offered to those on the path. It took me forever to figure out who this guy is, and I finally realized he's Lucas Gray from Hitman 2. Oh, okay. What you do will matter, I promise. <laughs> what you do will matter, I promise, is a really... <laughs> Uh, yeah. At any point, did anyone get up in front of the room of people at this event and say, what you do will matter, I promise? No. Man, but that's that a bummer. Definitely the vibe I was getting from a lot of the writing in this game. Yeah. I mean, somebody says, we got this. Oh, in, wow. In the first 30, 45 minutes. You think they would have not done that? Yeah. Uh, weird. Yeah, like, the, the player character does not seem to have a very strong personality from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not in the way that a Commander Shepard might have. Sure. Um, like, it's less about maybe, like, a good guy, bad guy decisions yeah. and more like, take this mission while being nice or yes. take this mission while being snarky. A, a little bit more of an asshole. Okay. But, but generally, you're just kind of an upbeat, wisecracking, like, do-gooder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I like the visual design of the of the javelins and yeah, the, the combat looked. I mean, the the spell effects coming out of your guy, that stuff looked good. Yeah. This just looks like something that they forgot to do until it was too late. Yeah, and so like, oh, we got to put people in this. Yeah, so, so, so like, there's plenty of footage of the combat already out there. The reason I wanted to go to this event more than anything was to see what the story stuff behind it all is. Right. Uh, because Bioware is such a storied RPG studio, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, I really wanted to know. Like, is there a bunch of Mass Effect lurking behind this open world loot driven combat. There's been an unusual amount of and what did Sentinel Bryn here have to say about it? Whatever it is. She said I could go out and kill some more Scar. All right. Potentially in waves and get three items out of it there at the bottom. Freelancer. Right. No problem. Um, yeah, that's how that's typically how you wander around and interact with characters in, in uh, Fort Tarsus and pick up missions. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you did you see the hangar, the social hub? Do we have any footage I of that? I don't or? think we have any footage of that. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was all working exactly because there was nobody else there at the time. It was empty. Okay. You do have access to basically all of the nodes that you would walking around the proper Fort Tarsus, also in that hangar. So like the shop, the forge to customize and craft. Oh, so it's like the the like quick yeah shortcut it is version. Basically, of... a, a smaller room that is yeah just kind of a quick menu that accesses all the functionality. Huh. Uh, so here at the game world. Um, this is pretty early on, so there aren't a lot of icons populated here, but typically if you have any story and side missions, they'll show up here, uh, and you can pick those. Um, the game has what are called, uh, strongholds, I believe, mm. which, from what I gather, yeah, so you can actually, I think you can kind of match into existing games like this, so if somebody had a stronghold going, I could just hop in there. Um, those seem to be like dungeons or kind of strikes in the Destiny context. More kind of like okay, slightly yeah. more involved, longer missions with more objectives. Um, and that seems like something that's separated from the story. Like you have a story mission there, but maybe if you'd done that story mission, it would be more like, hey, come back here for the stronghold. I'm not sure if there are different locations or not. Okay. Well, most of the story well, missions... That's, that's what I'm asking. Like, do, yeah. you, do, you think it, do you get the impression that that's like, hey, it's a, it's a beefed up version of the mission? Oh, no, they're, they're with separate. With the story stripped out. They are okay. separate. Yeah, okay. they're definitely... Because they have story in, their, in themselves. Like they, they have their own okay. unique little narratives. Okay. Uh, like one of them was like, oh, the Scar are manufacturing a bunch of acid 
bombs in this facility. We need to get in there and stop them from doing that. Um, this is the, the quest interface. Like you've got, <coughs> excuse me, you've got story missions, side missions, like character specific missions. You've got these kind of faction mm. challenges. Like these are more cumulative over time. Uh, okay. As you can see, like yep. you just kind of as you do stuff, you're racking up meter with these different groups. Hundred kills with a shotgun. To get uh, yeah, this thing. and then you yeah, end up yeah. getting a bunch of stuff out of it over time, uh, seemingly. Um, so like a lot of different activities to be working on at a time. Yeah. But like I said, you you can't go out into the world and just tick off a giant laundry list of missions while you're there. You pick a mission before you load into the world, do that mission, and then load back out. So yeah. it's not quite as free form as that. Huh. Um, here's just one other later mission uh, that I did where I was playing the Interceptor with a sniper rifle. I didn't click with the Interceptor very much. Uh, part of the problem here is I ran out of ammo for my other gun, so I have to be using a sniper rifle yeah. for a second. Um, yeah. Don't pick the sniper class if you're not looking to snipe. Well, that gun was totally my choice. I just picked the sniper because it was the best green that I had. Oh. Uh, but So this class has like throwing stars. Um, and some kind of mines that you can throw down, which I did not find to be super effective, but it's largely a melee class. Like, this is, oh, this is the class right, that okay. does, like, really involved high damage melee stuff. The other classes just have, like, kind of a single hit melee. All right. Um, I, I want to say the game sort of portrayed the Interceptor as, like, a higher level javelin. Like an advanced, or, like, yeah, hey, yeah, or kind of be, yes. be all right at this game. Yes, here's your kind of glass cannon. Yeah, like kind of re requiring a little more nuance. Yeah. Uh, They're down. Did they seem a little off balance to you? Huh. It's got a really nice look to it. Yeah, I, I do it like the look, look of their their suits and stuff. And the world is big, and you can move in and out of these interior uh, areas pretty seamlessly, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, like that's the one thing it has over Destiny for me is like a big world to explore. Right instead of just these very small segmented levels. Uh, and, and the traversal, obviously. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's being fun. able to fly everywhere, you know, it, it's... Yeah. It's not hard to envision this game as like, oh, you can fly when you're in the outside world, but when you're in missions, absolutely not. Right, uh, no. And that would be a, very disappointing. Yeah. So it's cool that you can just kind of, oh, I want to get over there, I can just fly yeah, it is. it is cool. It is as freeform as it is. So there's a little bit of light puzzle solving. Like you saw, I found that purple sigil on the underside of that bridge. Yeah. Uh, which told me what to set that thing to. Mm -hmm. um, although, at, now that you mentioned limiting flight, there are spots where you get stuck in a flight suppression field. Oh, wow. And it turns off your jetpack. Wow, okay. Uh, well, but, the, but, the, but then sure. at that point, like, the, but then at that happen. point, yeah, the objective there is just like, okay, kill the thing yeah. generating the field, and then you can fly again. Uh, I only saw that once the entire time I was yeah. playing, so it's not like they're going to take the fun thing away from you that yeah. often. Hey, so here's, uh, this is maybe a weird question, uh, given that the game is not out and uh, this is not the final build of the game, though I, I understand they've gone gold. Oh. Uh, I believe they, I want to say they said that. I mean, the game's out soon enough that they would almost have to be. Yeah, that would make uh, sense. Close yeah. to being in manufacturing by now. Yeah. Whatever that means for an online link game. Um, I can't believe it. I only ask because of how the Mass Effect event, the similar Mass Effect event went last time. Yeah. Game seems stable? Um, I ran into a lot of mission progress bugs okay. uh, that had to be fixed via console. Mm. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough to say. They were also having some network problems, so it's hard to say how much was related to that and how much was the game. I, uh, I don't want to, like, you know, like, that's, that's I'm, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. It, yeah, I when they had that Battlefield review event before that one came out and yeah. it was real rough. They also said like, "Oh, it's a network problem. Yeah. Don't worry. These uh, the game crashing. That's a network issue. Don't yeah. worry." And then yeah. the game came out and it was not fixed. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes when it, when it launches. For sure. Yeah, uh, there there is a there is a demo for people who pre-ordered this weekend. Uh, and then that same demo will be going free for everybody next weekend, cool. so like people will be able to bang on it a little bit. Yeah. But also those are missions that they, I'm sure, have tested to death. Mm -hmm. uh, so how the wider game is going to perform and hold up at launch remains to be seen. Yeah. I hope it works. It's just me, or is nothing happening? But then you hope everything works. Easy. Of course. Uh, it's got a nice look to it. I, yeah, yeah I, I, I want this game to be good. I like Same. playing it at E3. Yeah, it, it in plays that short well. little window. It's like, yeah. okay, this seems like it, it. It's got a. It's got something going for it. Yeah. 
Uh, I just, I, the story has not grabbed me. Although, the reason I threw this cutscene in here is because this is like the one story thing that I saw in the entire time with the game that felt like some good old Bioware stuff. What is this? No. Incredible. Shove off, Hansi! What went awry? We struck the manifold. Manifold, definition, amplification, or multiplication. Yeah, that guy's like practically more than Solus, right? Yeah. This is sure. Total scorp drop. Wait, wait, wait. This is total scorp I, drop. Man, I hate scorp drop so much. Ugh. He cleaved and freeze what happened. Gotta clean my scorp's litter box like twice a day at this point. An inverse function of the manifold divided you? I don't like this. Physical multiplication, psychic division. A personality split three ways. No! No, no. It's not what the manifold is supposed to do. <laughs> Ooh, he should split into three more I like, dudes. I like I like his evil Matthias voice. Do you think the manifold affected them too? Three Dominion soldiers? The same soldier. I'm not sure. We have to go check. Agreed. Any information will help. Wait! What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Stay out of trouble? The trouble's my middle name. No. It's Arrow. Guys! Focus! It's Arrow. Go! You're right, buddy. Yeah, I don't know. That that was the one scene I saw yeah. where I was like, all right, there's some clever stuff in here that, sure. that might be interesting over time. Okay. Um, but a lot of it was just real basic, like, oh, the evil empire is on their way. We got to stop them. Right. Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. Like, yep. not a lot of depth there, but again, it was a preview event. Like, I, I hope that the story shapes up over time. Yeah, we'll see. It's a different game for Bioware to be making, yeah. but, you know, like... I also feel like they're pretty set blueprints for making this style of game, yeah. too. Like, you know, they're not flying entirely blind. Oh, definitely not. Um, <laughs> a lot of case studies for them to learn from sure. over the last few sure. years, let's say. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the parts seem to fit together pretty well yeah. overall. I'm... I'm Cautiously optimistic about about where it's gonna go. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I want it to work out. Yeah. I I don't know that I have your quite your level of optimism, mm. but there's some stuff like looking at it, you're like, okay, that seems cool, that seems cool, that seems yeah. cool. Just the way it fits together doesn't I don't know, something yeah. about it. I mean, you need to get in there with your own character that you care about. Yeah, you that's know? always like, the thing hard, with games like this. It's hard like, hard to get attached to your progress at an event where you're just right. gonna walk away from it at the end of the day. So uh, I'm absolutely gonna give it a shot. When it comes out, yeah, it seems definitely. promising enough for that. Yeah, it's uh, out like uh, about a month out. Soon, yeah, like yeah. I think fifteenth of February. If That's you when like if, the first like, if, like if nine you, different release dates, depending on which tier of service you're subscribed yeah, to you or whatever. Buy the hundred dollar edition and stand on your head uh -huh. while reciting the alphabet backwards. Then you can play it on February fifteenth. Great. Let's I do don't. That. I don't know if it's actually hundred dollars, but why? Yeah. That, yes. Uh, so, that's all I got. Something like that. Cool. Couple weeks, three weeks, four weeks. We will be playing Anthem soon. All right. Thanks, Jeff. We'll check it out. Thanks, Brad.